the story of the brand Xiaomi. Xiaomi today is a $54 billion, highly successful tech company that makes everything from toilet lids to hoverboards. It's hard to believe, but it all started with one penniless Chinese student who had no money or connections, but an idea. Today, I will tell you about a relatively new brand that hasn't even been out for 11 years. In just four years, it has practically flipped the tech market on its head. As you have probably already guessed, we will talk about Xiaomi, a brand that has become one of the leaders in the production of electronics. Thanks to the ever-increasing range of products, the company consistently sets new sales records. Earning no less than $26 billion a year, they leave their competitors in the dust. The company was founded on April 6, 2010 by the young entrepreneur Lei Jun. He is now one of the 10 richest people in China and has a reputation as a man who will be successful whatever it takes. The fruit of his labor is on the shelves of stores around the world. Like many people, Lei Jun started from the bottom. He had been mulling over the idea of starting his own brand for a long time. Lei Jun was born in 1969 in the small town of Xiangtao, Hubei province. There is not much information about his childhood and early adulthood. The future businessman was a very ordinary child who attended a regular school. He studied computer science at Wuhan University only because his childhood friend studied there. It is also known that his father was a civil servant. It is important to note that at the time, computer technology was a new discipline in Chinese universities. Fortunately, Wuhan University was one of the first institutions in the country to develop a computer science program. However, as a student, Lei Jun didn't grasp his unique opportunity. He didn't want to fall behind his classmates, so he did what he had to do to pass his classes. It was only later in his studies that he developed an interest in programming. The issue was that the university didn't have many computers, so the students had to wait a long time for a chance to use them. Lei quickly adapted to the situation. He spent most of his time in the computer lab and sat in on classes that other students missed. He also volunteered to help his classmates with their work. He was so active that the professors often kicked him out of class, but Lei always came up with new ways to work on the computer. Lei Jun was inspired to create his own business after reading the book, The Fire of Silicon Valley. After a while, he created the Yellow Roses Group, a platform that fellow computer enthusiasts could use to talk to each other and develop programs. Thanks to this, the story that Lei Jun earned his first million while still at university was once widely believed but the entrepreneur himself dispelled this myth. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in computer science in 1991 and moved to Beijing where he found a job in a research laboratory. Although he made a decent living, he didn't enjoy his work. He wanted to explore new possibilities. For this reason, he quit his prestigious job a year later and decided to completely change his life. Since he had no work experience nor connections, major technology companies did not hire him but his hard work and determination soon paid off. In November 1991, Lei Jun went to an exhibition where he met Du Bajun, vice president of Kingsoft. He made such a good impression that Du Bajun invited Lei Jun to work for his company. It's worth noting that in 1991, Kingsoft only had five employees. But this did not deter Lei Jun. In 1992, he became the sixth member of the Kingsoft team. In just six years, he went from an ordinary employee to head of the company, and the company itself grew a lot in this time. Despite the emergence of many competitors, as well as the plague of piracy in the Chinese computer market, Lei Jun confidently managed the company and eventually moved its work to the internet. Alongside his work at Kingsoft, he was involved with various other projects. During this period, he developed and launched Joyo.com. This platform for trading books, music, and videos was created in 2000, and in 2004, it was bought by Amazon for the impressive sum of $75 million. Lei Jun already understood the internet's potential, and he started to invest the money he had into a range of interesting projects. In 2007, Lei Jun gave up his post as head of the company. He believed that the age of software was over and the new internet era was beginning. After his departure, he retained a seat on the board of directors and made good money off his shares that he owned in the company. From then on, he focused on investing in various projects and was very interested in the internet. Some of his most successful investments are local payment, Vankel, and UC Web. Over time, he had saved up enough money and was ready to implement his bold ideas. 
This was the beginning of Xiaomi, which means grain in Chinese. Other than Lei Jun, the company started with just eight people, including his good friend Lin Bin. Without a doubt, going into the mobile devices market was a risk, as it was already controlled by a few large, well-known brands. The only way to succeed was to take on the competition. The financial investment put into the launch of the new brand was quite small. Lei Jun also proved that startups are not just a young man's game. When the company was founded, he was already 40 years old, had a lot of cash in the bank, and had settled down into a quiet life. It wasn't money that drove him, but a keen interest in the business. So begins the story of Xiaomi. Not many people know that the first product the company put out was a completely unique design. The operating system for tablets and smartphones called MIUI combined all of the advantages of Android and iOS. It quickly became popular in China and overseas. It is still used today and is considered one of the best mobile operating systems in the world. Lei Jun was a fan of the iPhone. He wanted to create a product that would be much cheaper than the iPhone without compromising on quality. Xiaomi released their first phone, the Mi 1, in 2011. The phone came equipped with a dual-core processor with a clock speed of 1.5 GHz, an 8 megapixel camera, and costed just $317. They were able to bring the price down by refusing to pay for advertising, using simple packaging, and focusing on online sales. Lei Jun believed and continues to believe that a high-quality product does not need advertising. The phone was mainly promoted via social networks. He is still active on social media to this day. Other than the fact that he simply enjoys using the platforms, it is useful because he receives a lot of feedback from his customers that can be used to update the products the company produces. Eventually, the brand launched their own retail outlets, but the company still focuses on online sales as this is much easier for them. Phones are sold directly from the factory, so they have no need for warehouses. The sales algorithm is constantly updated. Now, the company announces the technical specifications of the new products in advance and sets an official release date through their website. The products are sold in retail outlets later for an inflated price. A certain percentage of smartphones are sold at cost. This is a strategic move. The company offers customers their own mobile services and makes money through that. For example, their MeTalk Messenger app is widely used. The Mi Pay system was introduced in 2016. Lei Jun later transferred the right to produce phones to several other companies and signed contracts with them. From 2012, different versions of the Mi 1 started to appear with a range of colors. In that year, they set a new sales record for the Mi 1, selling over a million phones. There is no doubt that the leadership's ability to think outside the box has helped the company become one of the leaders of the market. When a defective Mi 1 was found, Lei Jun was quick to react. He didn't apologize. Instead, he opened workshops in Beijing where phones could be repaired for free. This shows that he is focused on the customer. Everyone was talking about the company again, and the defect was soon forgotten. The Xiaomi Mi 2 was released in August 2012. It was announced as the most affordable smartphone in the world with excellent technical specs and immediately attracted everyone's attention. The Mi 2 had a quad-core processor, 1280 by 720 pixel display, Adreno 320 graphics core, and two gigabytes of RAM for just $300. The first 50,000 Mi 2s were sold online in under three minutes. Impressive numbers. They sold more than 11 million phones in 11 months, and the company was valued at $4 billion. In 2013, the company released some new products, including the Mi 3 smartphone, Redmi 1 budget phone, and the Mi TV. The company was the fifth highest ranking mobile brand in China and had firmly established itself on the market. But Lei Jun wanted more. In that year, the company opened their first store. It was opened in Beijing under the name Mi Home. It was based on the Apple Store and featured two special rooms for household products. It also featured an exhibition hall where many products could be viewed but not bought. New Xiaomi smartphones, for example, had to be purchased through the website. By 2014, the company had opened 54 stores. The company grew steadily every year and expanded its range of products. For example, in 2014, new products were introduced alongside smartphones and tablets, such as the Mi Box Pro TV set-top box and the $13 Mi Band 1 fitness tracker. 
The range of markets the company now operates in is so great that it's pointless to list it all, you already know. As well as expanding the range of products on offer, Lei Jun has been acquiring shares in popular Chinese services, allowing the company to increase its personal assets. It reminds me of Lei Jun's nickname, the Chinese Steve Jobs. He resembles Jobs in several ways. The way he dresses, his ability to take good ideas from his competitors, and his skill in building large companies. But there are some distinctions. Lei is a more laid-back person, and he is prepared to do a lot for his clients. Lei believes that American entrepreneurs need to learn to make concessions in order to succeed in China. But there is one trait that Lei Jun and Steve Jobs definitely have in common. They are both workaholics. Lei Jun has a very strict work schedule, despite all his success and money. He keeps his personal life private and devotes a lot of time to business. His only known hobby is rock climbing. Many customers do not know how to pronounce the name correctly. We often hear Xiaomi, Xiaomi, or even Xiaomi. It's actually very simple. The word can be broken down into two parts, Xiao and Mi, which makes Xiaomi, with the emphasis on the second syllable. The fact that Lei Jun was able to build a successful company in such a short period of time is very impressive. He likes to remind people that when he started the company, his main focus was not to make money, as he was already quite wealthy. Above all, he wanted to prove the stereotype that Chinese brands produced low-quality products wrong. To this day, they produce high-quality products at a lower price point than the competitors. People don't want to pay more than they need to. Of course, many people, especially older people, prefer the old familiar names of Apple and Samsung. But young people mostly prefer Xiaomi. Who knows, maybe one day Chinese and Korean brands will take the place of the once famous Nokia and Lenovo. Write your opinions down about this brand and if you think it has potential. Share your thoughts in the comments. That's all. See you soon.